again and welcome to Manage Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. Hi guys, I'm Carla Garrett. And my allergies are absolutely positively killing me. Oh, today. don't touch like your eyes oh my God, or I your ears. I made the mistake yeah. two days ago. I touched my eyes. <laughs> and, like, we went to CVS and bought all sorts of drop and like. If you don't have allergies and you never had bad allergies, you can't even imagine. Like, just everything. It's yes. And then randomly, I'll sneeze. I'll just have a sneezing fit. Or randomly, my nose will just start like running like a faucet. <laughs> you know, fun times. Um, I was saying to Tammy before the show, I used to get really extreme allergies, but mine have gotten under control yeah. enough. By way of example, <laughs> last year. We still literally went from the heat to closed yeah. windows to airing out the house ones, closing the windows and putting on the air con, right? right? right. And we've had like the windows open yeah. now for a, maybe a week. Yeah. It was a little cold last night, but um, you know, it's a little stuffy, yeah. but not yeah. too bad. It's still worth getting outside. I can deal with outside. the stuffy, I can deal with all that. The itch makes me insane. But anyways. So uh, did you go to Taco too? I did Taco? not. Um, yeah, me either. Yeah, I, just, I just I wasn't in the mood. It, and, and it was rainy. Um, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to walk. I, I don't need to deal with all this. <laughs> to Too many people. That's how you know when you're getting old. Like well, I, I have to admit. I, mean, I like, don't I, mind, but I was like, oh, I don't want to wait in lines. Yeah, I just don't. <laughs> we uh, did go out um, on Sunday, which was Cinco de Mayo, right? Yeah. We went out on Sunday to um, I don't remember which one. One of the One's on the west side, either Nuevo okay, or yeah, Puerto okay. uh -huh. Vallarta. Yep. The, one of the, we went to the one in the plaza. It was good. It's fine. Puerto Vallarta, I think, um, is that one. That's what I mean. Yeah. I can never remember which one's which. They're the oh. same people. Right. Just, yeah. The, and they're right next to each the other. The one with the outside space? or No, we went oh, to the one okay. in, the, pl in the, the back in the plaza. Yeah. It was fine. It was fun. Um, good vibes? Yeah. You know, tons of people. It was just crazy. Like, you're like, oh. <laughs> Any excuse for a party, yes. as they say. Um, the LP, speaking of parties, I am just going to throw this out there because there is wild drama in libertarian circles nationally going on because Trump, Biden, Trump and Biden were invited by the Libertarian Party to attend their Libertarian Convention, mm -hmm. which is happening soon. Mm -hmm. And Trump said, sure. sure, I'll come talk to you guys, which is smart politics. And then RFK yesterday or the day before issued a press release um, challenging Trump to a debate at the Libertarian Convention. So now suddenly it's the most... Google alerts I have ever seen huh. for Libertarian ever. So everything is kind of frothy and up there. And so everyone, because, you know, you wouldn't be a Libertarian if you didn't seize the opportunities handed to you on a silver platter. Everyone's infighting about what a terrible idea it is that everyone is courting the Libertarian vote because we are a large enough block and we have enough principles to actually change policy. So... I think it's great. No one else seems to think it's great. My hope is that RFK and Trump or Trump and RFK become the actual party running together, outsiders from the left and the right together to fight the uni party in DC and to like either fix it. Like, look, DC is so bad. People either need to do something extremely drastic or all the states need to go their own way. I know. I, I mean, know. it's just, it's, it's, it uh, cannot be fixed. Having a conversation with some political folk yesterday, and um, I said, because Dan and I just laugh all the time, because Dan tends to look at um, uh, sites that project who's winning what states. Because, right. you know, everybody can talk about whatever they want, but the reality is if, if certain candidates win certain states, it's just, it's over, right? And, and the trend just shows that, Trump's numbers just keep increasing, no matter what. And I said to some Dan the other day, and then I had this conversation again, there's like a whole section of this country that just doesn't, can't, either refuses to accept or just can't see it. Like, you understand every time they push Trump, it doesn't hurt him. Like, they think they're hurting him. Like, somebody goes, well, they're going to now, the judge is threatening to uh, put him in jail. And then so the person I was talking to yesterday who is a national p 
politician person, you know, a national political operative who's like, okay, so then he'll win the election from jail. Literally, like... I mean, it, it happens if they're not a republic, so why wouldn't it, it happen literally, here? It literally, everything they do, everything the left and their their cronies do to try to somehow stop the Trump mania. Like, that's the best way I can come up with it. Well, it's like this thing, because they think it's about Trump. And they all understand that the reason people in, the in this country, in my opinion, are so willing to vote for Trump again for president it's not necessarily Trump. It's just that they are done. They are done with the stupid and the like, the things that they're being lied to. So, and they're just willing to go with like, let's just blow it all up. I, I mean, I think it is at the stage where it, the bread and circuses has become so pronounced. Uh, you know, I think, was it a Beyonce song? The Say My Name, <laughs> Say My Name song? I mean, it's kind of like that, right? Like, they've sort of created this manifestation, this incantation of Trump, 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 Trump. And then they're, like, insanely surprised when Trump is... is successful because you keep saying his name. Now, let me explain one thing to you about politics. It <laughs> is about name recognition. Yeah. It is literally... Who knows your name? Yeah. Who picks and your name? It is popular. It is popularity. And Biden's numbers continue to tank. Well, I mean, Biden's because he's in, he's got senile. dementia, and his policies are terrible. He wants to take more and more things from this group of people and give it to that group of people. You know, like people. I, I said this to somebody the other day too. I said I'm so tired of hearing about affordable housing. Not because I feel bad for the people who can't. You know, like, I, I appreciate the fact that there's people struggling to find housing. But what bugs me is I was reading an article in the about Massachusetts, and Massachusetts is the governor there is considering with like a 2% transfer fee on um, mansions. Mansion so, tax, bring well, it on because right. I will sell every rich person like, in Massachusetts mansion a tax. House. So you look and go, well, what's considered a mansion? They're talking about houses that are a million dollars or more, which for some people who aren't actually looking at actual numbers, they go, well, oh, if you can afford a million dollar house. And I'm like, do you realize that a million dollar house in Massachusetts is just a regular big house. It's yeah. not a mansion. It might be a four bedroom. I, I say it's great. The more they introduce worse policies, the better it I is agree. for us. Because what we did see through COVID is the true uh, movement yeah. of people and how you vote with your feet well, when your freedom so, actually matters. You know, looking at that, and I was like, that's insane. That, that just, why would anybody have to pay the state of Massachusetts an additional $20,000 because they were buying a house that is not a mansion? It is just the, re the reality of what the price of a house is, right? So then in the article, they said, well, because in Massachusetts, there are 200,000 units short for the amount because for the increase in population and i said this is where i get annoyed if we have such an increase in population in this country that state after state after state is having a housing crisis then stop letting damn people into our country i mean period what was, what was the last our, number we saw was 13 million is it, that even like, possible but suddenly the housing crisis starts to make a lot more sense, sense. because where are you going to put so because, 13 million people without noticing without them? building <laughs> houses we can't yeah. just add another you state can't have more stringent oh God, regulation and zoning that makes less and less things available supply and demand it's not rocket science but that you know like people talk about the affordability and all this stuff i'm like how about we start talking about why it is we don't have enough housing all of in recent years well well but because no one really wants to talk about the real problems right. so that we could come up with the real solutions right. because then people realize the ones with the money are like we don't have the real solutions and now we gotta like d distract you but two things one is World News came out yesterday with a new ranking. New Hampshire is number two. We are almost number one. Utah beat us out on this one. It's sort of for overall, I would say, almost quality of living. It looks at everything from crime and corrections, where New Hampshire is actually number one because we have such a low crime rate. We have such a low crime rate because we have such an armed, polite society up here in New Hampshire. Um, 
But yeah, we came in number two, and some of the stats I was looking at this morning, amongst other things, was median income was listed at fifty thousand, yeah. which you know is higher than the average. Yeah. I think it's yeah. around thirty six. That's median, of course, which means there's a lot above and uh, below. Uh, there was. Uh, the population of New Hampshire, so our budget, one, one, one billion is our GDP of the state of New Hampshire. And then the, um, the population is up to 1.4 million. And 15 years ago when I moved here, it was 1.2 million. That's a lot and of I was like, 200,000 new people over 15 years in New Hampshire? That's a lot of people. And, and I feel like the 1.2 million was still the number of, like, right. maybe I looked three years yeah. ago, you know, that like, you about right. update numbers. So I was like, whoa, where did 200,000 new people, people come from? Then today, NPR put, NHPR put out a story saying there was a bipartisan bill that would help create more mm. affordable housing in New Hampshire that somehow got killed. And I'm like, how does a bipartisan bill that is literally solving a problem that everyone, not left and right, not Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, and everyone agrees there's a housing crisis. Yep. So why did that bill get killed? So the question becomes who benefits? And turns out there is a bunch of COVID federal money that's being pushed in to solve the housing crisis that is being funneled to private contractors who are connected to the political class in New Hampshire, and they are all making out like bandits. There is a big stink. There is a story to be had here, and maybe the actual news sources like NPR, maybe Granite Rock, someone else, can you please go research this? Because we can't do everything. <laughs> I'm telling you, there is a story there. Like there is a story at the Sununu Rape Center. Would we like to talk about so, that? Did you did you read? Okay, for those who haven't, I, I'm very interested in seeing how this plays out because I was I, I'm torn. But then I'm but the more I, I my gut, you know, you have your gut feeling about things, and then you're like, okay, maybe not, and then you're like, no, I'm back to my gut. So um, earlier this week or last week, um, the jury came back in the first civil trial against the state of New Hampshire by a, a man who, when he was younger, had been abused at YDC. All right, so just for the one person who possibly doesn't know, there is this youth center that was built in the 90s here on the Up east the side end, of yep. Manchester on the north end, right? So it was a youth detention center that the then governor chose to put his name on. So I'm gonna say the following, if you choose to put your name on a youth detention center, then you carry your name with everything that happens there. Mm -hmm. And here is the reality of what happened there. There were children who were abused mm -hmm. by the state, by state by, employees. Right, by employees. And that, here's the reason no one hears about it. It's because the Democrats and the Republicans have a vested interest to suppress the story because no one looks good. They passed a bill this session giving a hundred million dollars of your money, taxpayer New Hampshire Granite State money, to cover this up. Now, so, go ahead. Th there's numerous cases, but this is the first of them. Um, so there was a lengthy, I mean, it did seem like it was a really lengthy trial. I, I go every night before I go to bed and I go to YouTube and I look at local news and I felt like some days I'm like, yeah, 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 youth to censor. <laughs> yeah, 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 weather. Right. Like there was yeah. nothing else happening in New Hampshire uh, news anyway. So anyways, the jury came back. They, you know, they, they rested. They, the jury came back and um, found in favor of the plaintiff, which is not a surprise, um, with a 30 eight million dollar total award and i remember thinking holy cow that's a lot of money right well i saw the 38 million and i knew about the 100 million they've earmarked and i was like well the math here is clearly not going to make sense so i don't know if they're colluding to be like oh we'll just go back for another bite at the apple no. so we'll increase the 100 million to i don't know a billion so I was at first I was like, holy cow, that's a lot of money. Right. And that's, you know, this is going to be a problem for the math, the math, because, <laughs> you know, 
we are the state of New Hampshire. But it's also an indictment, and it says something that the jurors of New Hampshire were like, this is heinous enough that I'm going to give this terrible, like, I agree. I think the jury did want to send a message. I think they were. So then, the, the, uh, obviously, the state of New Hampshire is going to appeal, you know, like the normal process, right? But then the next day, um, I read or watched or whatever it was that um, the state was going to file a motion, or not even before that, be, that, so, that somebody at the state level, somebody at the attorney general's office said, ha, huh, but there's a law in New Hampshire that limits comp, uh, compensatory payments... To f- is that the word I want? I, I know what you're saying, but I, is it a law? No, or was it, it part of what was no, written into it is, the settlement no, I believe, of this no, bill? No, because I don't know. It's it's on the books in New Hampshire. The state of New Hampshire will only pay four hundred and seventy-five thousand. There might be change after this, but four hundred seventy-five thousand dollars per incident, and the per incident is the <laughs> is the catch. Well, and it. And looking at the case, and I under I can appreciate how bad the jurors do feel at this point. The jurors said when they came back with their verdict, spelled out in an, an incident with a um, a payment of three thirty eight million dollars, and the state has just said it's four hundred seventy five thousand dollars. That's the cap. So now looking back, so then jury jurors are outraged because they felt like they did not get what they thought. And at first, so at first I thought, well, too bad for you. Somebody should have, you know, I don't know. I think that's up to the, who's, I looked at Dan, I go, who do you think would be responsible for making sure the jurors understood? And he said the judge. So I was like, yeah, I'm just thinking, I don't know. Okay. So then I, I was still feeling bad for the jurors because they feel like they were misled. But then yesterday I'm in the car and I heard this and I thought, yeah, um, the instructions that are given to the jurors to tell them about damages because you, you can only, certain damages are for this and certain damages are for that. So they give instructions because you're not professional jurors. Those instructions to the jurors, which in my opinion, look in a backwards look, probably should have spelled out that it, it's per emphasizing on the per incident. Those are approved by both the prosecution and the defense, like from both sides. So those jurors either weren't given a good enough instructions, but that's the way. Uh, you don't get to go back. I don't think they get to go back and do a re- redo. Like, I understand, but you can't. You, I mean, it, it'd be like saying, well, when you told us about deciding guilt or innocence, you told us these things, and we didn't, you didn't tell us about this thing, so we'd like to change our verdict. The verdict is the verdict. It's recorded. I mean, I, I, I think the I guy's think getting four hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. I think you can. I think there are grounds for appeal if the jury or jury instructions weren't per the law or something. something it's like kind that. of a nuance. But you know what I mean? Like if both sides approve the instructions to the jurors. Right, but uh, you know, yeah, uh, it's uh, it's. Uh, uh, I mean, so the, I guess the good news, if we got to find something good out of this, it's uh, now the other people going forward well, have, we'll a have a better sense. Better, right. So let's say you know, if you're looking at thirty-eight million, that would be what right. like four, uh, t- you know, twenty incidences right. each. Uh, you know, if you're going to go by right, the math right, right. to get to the number, or whatever. But I do think they probably um, have to be able to prove incidents that's probably part of the burden also. right but i mean there's so much shenanigans going on here with this case because where it piqued my interest i hate stories like this it's kind of like when the catholic scandals with the the uh, boston yeah. globe came out and everything you know no one looks good it's always a cover-up the bad people kind of got away with yeah, it for yeah. 30 years there was a lot of harm that was done yeah. and now no one really wants to you know do the reckoning um but the 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 reckoning needs to happen and they so so they put people on the stand who were supposed to be cross-examined right so the bad guys okay let's just make it easy to understand right like so the bad guys are supposed to get on the stand so that people could cross-examine them so that we can get to the bottom of what each of these incidences are they are all pleading the fifth not only are they pleading the fifth, which is your right to not yeah. self-incriminate yourself. It's in the Constitution. You're totally yeah. entitled to it. But you are supposed to go on the stand and 
uh, call your right to self-incrimination. Right. Like you have to go up and say, I'm, I'm taking the fifth, right. right? We've all heard that. So for some reason, this judge, and perhaps some of the research that needs to happen here is who is this judge and what's going on there? What's the backstory? Who's it beholden to? All of that stuff, right? For some reason said, no, it's too self-incriminating to the plaintiff to be on for there. the jurors to see these people say they're not going to self-incriminate themselves. So they just never... And so I was yeah. like, what? That doesn't sound right, right. either. I agree so, with you that these are the types of cases. It's like, I don't want to make my... The fact that I keep... That I'm saying I think it's just going to be the 475 does not in any way mean that I side with the, the state in the case. I just think the process is the process and somebody along the way and part of that blame well, has gonna, to go to the attorneys and I know the attorneys. Oh, I know of one of course, the, here's the, the attorneys for the plaintiff because you should never have approved the, Well, the saddest part so. is, you know, the, the, the actual people who are harmed are going to get cents on the dollar. Yeah. Most of this money will go to the lawyers. Yeah. Everyone who's part of the establishment, anyone who's licensed by the state, anyone who works for the state is going to make out pretty good for the shady stuff they did. And the poor people, you, me, the Ordinary people of the world are just going to get shafted. So I have an interesting thing, and I'm going to be botching it because I, you said something and I wrote down some notes. that. So Dan was reading me a thing this morning, and I was like, well, that's weird. So the FBI puts out a crime report, and I don't remember what it's called, but they, you know, they take all the information from all the states, and they, you know, here's where we're at with crime, right? And, you know, we constantly hear that crime is down, right? So Dan was reading that, to gen to the, the information that comes from the states to the FBI to generate this information. Um, in 2021, only, is that true? In 2021, 24% of states do not report. Okay. And that seems to have been the constant. So even that's a, that's one in four. Yeah. And that's a quarter of the states that we're using this data to say what the crime rates are. Well, which states are in that, right? But <laughs> what's really weird is it's now up to 40%. That are compliant. That, that are, are not reporting. Oh. So, so they're when, just making up well, numbers. Well, we're like, well, so <laughs> that's crime what they do in South down, Africa. But if 40%, I mean, if 40% includes Maryland and Illinois, how the heck can you, with a straight face, say that you're, you're collecting any kind of credible data? Right. If the, if well, I mean, let's I, start. I just thought that was a weird thing. Let, let's start here. So everyone knows that their basket of goods has become more expensive. $5.89 for a pound of Land Lakes butter All yesterday. right, there you go. Five eighty nine for butter. <laughs> we're going to make it the butter standard. Well, it let's, just was the one thing that. that jumped out of me. But eggs and, were only two sixty nine. dollars Woo! Okay, so... <laughs> so when they when the when the government measures their inflation rate that they are going to tell us is the inflation to tell us there is no inflation they now way back in the day they used to include things like food energy and your rent because those are the things you need to live they have removed all of those things from the basket of goods that they now measure to tell you what the inflation rate is. Yeah, I don't know either, but that is how it works. So with this, it's the same thing with the FBI crime rates, right? Like it's some government number, it's being made up, it's being presented to you like it is the oracle of all knowledge telling you this is the magic number, we should all believe it, but really, should you? So when you see these kinds of numbers, you should absolutely be asking yourself, where does this come, number come from? How is it generated? What is it really measuring? Are there other numbers? Does everyone agree this is the number? Or maybe there are outliers who say, like, this is the different number? And a great website to go consult is Shadow Stats. They are the people who look at the statistics that the government creates, and then they go tell you what the real story is. Um, so I, before we run out of time, I do want to do a little bitching, because, you know, I, I like to. Um, so last week I read an op Bed, um, from Representative Alicia Gregg, who I couldn't even tell you. She is from Nashua, shocking. Um, and it, she was talking about how lawmakers need to focus on real issues. And her claim is that um, reasonable people in New Hampshire recognize that the most pressing problems are housing, child care, health care, workforce, and climate change. 
No. I don't know which reasonable people she's dealing with, but those are not the reasonable people I know. But anyways, throughout here, she, she, she's worried about discrimination against LGBTQ community. And when they talk about these discrimination bills, what they're actually referring to is the bill that failed that would have said that T schools have to actually answer parents' questions honestly and truthful when they're asked. But we'll call them, you know, she'd like to call them discrimination bills. But anyways, what got my irk is she says in here, it's not hard to see parallels with the debate 12 years ago regarding marriage equality. Three years earlier, New Hampshire had enacted the Marriage Equality Act of 2009, but the 2012 legislators sought to repeal it when it switched back to Republican control. And I know I tend to lump things together too, and we all do, but I want to tell some, speak out right to Alicia Gray. You should go back and actually look at the details. You should actually look at the facts and shame on you for trying to infer in this article about, you know, supposed discrimination against LGBTQ, um, that it was not the Republicans that, uh, there were some Republicans that obviously put in a bill. Um, I don't think any of those Republicans are still in the legislature, by the way. But see, I was there because I was heavily involved in this bill. And back in 2012, HB 437, which was the bill to propose to repeal the Marriage Equality Act, was actually defeated by Republicans, not by the Democrats, by Republicans. Uh, when the motion was made to pass the bill, 74 Republicans voted no. Not one or two or a handful of six. And then when I, when I made the motion to kill the bill, 119 Republicans voted with me. So shame on this Democrat from Nashua for trying to sneak in some bias and make it sound like these Republicans don't even want gay people to be able to get married, which is so not true. It's just not a thing anymore. And it just got my irk. Um, before we also run out, I did want to say, so there's a new brewery coming in across the street, I read. Oh, um, cool. Next door to Hometown Roasters. So between the goat in there, um, Peter McCone, who was from Republic and Campo oh, and sweet. has joined with Hometown Coffee Roasters in their opening oh. Republic Brewery. So that's oh, exciting. Sweet. Uh, the mayor of Manchester is working to eliminate the Department of Housing Stability. I'm sure that'll be interesting news. And the last thing I want to mention was, um, Victor I'm, last week I said Victoria Sullivan's going to run for New Hampshire Senate against Donna Susie. Um, New Hampshire Liberty Alliance put out their liberty ratings yesterday, and Donna Susie is considered a constitutional, constitutional threat, threat to New Hampshire. So I want to mention that Victoria is having a fundraiser at the Hill at McIntyre on Tuesday, May 28th, 6 to 8 p.m. You can get more information at Victoria Sullivan 4 nhcom That's the number four. Um, yeah. That's so that's what I had. Yeah. It'll be a great fundraiser. The Hill's a wonderful place. I just love it up there. Um, but... You know, we can't, we have to do something about, I, I, I'm always about getting more reps elected, but you know, with 24 senators, you can't have a bunch of weenies. No. And you can't, the weenies can't I mean, can't I wish up. they hadn't gerrymandered my I district know. out. Um, but, you know, what can you do? What right. you can do is you can run for a house in Ward yeah. 11, which yeah. I'm gonna do. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's lots going on. Uh, filing periods in a couple weeks. It'll be interesting Opens to June see. June 5th. Yep. And of course, actually, folks, if you are undeclared and you are planning to run as a Republican in the elections, you have until June 3rd yep. to change your party yep. affiliation yep. from undeclared or independent to the Republican yep. Party. Otherwise, and you cannot it, sign up. Right. And if you voted in the, if you were an undeclared voter and did not switch back at the polls the last time, if you want to go back to undeclared, you have to do that by the same time. And if you are undeclared or a Republican even who wants to primary any of the Democrats who voted against Defend the Guard, come talk to me. There you go. <laughs> um, that's pretty much all we have this week. Um, it's going to be rainy through the weekend. The grass will be like this tall by next week. Um, I might not be able to stick it out for the entire month of May. I try not to mow until June 1st for the pollinators, but... I don't know. It's getting pretty close. Uh, I don't know. I, mine's covered in dandelions and wildflowers. I don't flowers, mind that, just but it's just I like, like it. oh, <laughs> the side yards are a hot mess. So, um, right, anyways, guys. we'll be back next week. Take care.